Well, good morning, everybody. Um, happy Thursday. Welcome to the QDriver Weekly Webinar. My name is Hilary Stupa. I am a developer for Qdabra and also an InfoPath MVP. And I am here today to talk about a K2 overview. I'm recording this so you guys will be able to you know, watch it again and check anything you've missed. And, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to at least get you introduced to K2 as another, as another option as you start thinking about uh, what's available to you now that we're looking at um, the announcement about the end of InfoPath's uh, natural life, right? So we've been working on this series for a little bit. This is our After InfoPath series. You can see what we've been through already in case there's something you missed that you want to go find on our YouTube channel. Um, and here we've got our upcoming webinars listed as well. Schedule, of course, could change. It, it just all, it all depends. There are other things that go on besides the weekly webinars, so sometimes stuff comes up, but we'll try to stick to this schedule. So, you know, you've probably seen the announcement and you're wondering when InfoPath is going away. I'm not going to read this slide to you. It's pretty much the same thing we showed last week. But, you know, in the next 10 years, we're probably looking at, at the decline of our favorite purple dinosaur. And so, you know, keep, keep that in mind as you go forward. Um, we've got uh, some ideas or some guesses around how things are going to degrade or pan out, but that's just a guess. You know, you want to keep that in mind as well. Here's the actual Office Blog InfoPath announcement. You know, how long will InfoPath be supported? You know, they're saying 10 years. Um, in fact, if you read down into the facts on this Office Blog, you will you will see that <laughs> as to the question of what shall I be doing now for my forms development, the answer has been uh, keep using info path so you know keep that in mind so that means we've got whoops that means we've got plenty of time to plan Roadrunner ran by really fast that means we've got plenty of time to plan and um, and that's great you know there's nothing to panic about here there's nothing to freak out about one of the reasons we get into the field of tech is because we like things to change. You know, if, I, I think if you get into the field of tech because you like stability, you probably not made the right choice. You know, so it's important to to keep change in mind and to and to enjoy change and embrace it and and look for ways to um, improve things. So th these kinds of shifts are our opportunity to reach out and try something new. So at Qdabra we've been trying to reach out and try new things and one of the things we've been looking at is K2. So I'm going to pop up a quick poll and unlike the last time I did the webinar I will remember to close the poll. I am just curious um, how familiar you are with K2. So go ahead and we'll, we'll leave the poll up for just a, a few a few seconds here, maybe 30 seconds, and then we'll we'll pop back into our pop back into our webinar. So what I'm seeing so far um, is n not anybody in the webinar who uses it, uh, but that people have seen it, they've been to the website, or uh, they thought it was a sporting good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to close this right now because last time I learned that my screen sharing pauses if the poll is open because I kind of just moved on. Um, okay, so let's talk about K2. Um, K2, it's a business application platform. It's got a lot of stuff to it. I first heard about it when I, uh, early times with InfoPath and an organization I worked for had it as a workflow engine. I was impressed with it for workflow. Um, since then, uh, it's grown quite a lot, and it's a full suite of products that can help you create business applications rapidly. Here's a screenshot from one of their um, promo PDFs. They've got excellent promotional materials, really interesting stuff, well-written, and also nice to look at. So I encourage you to, to check out their site, check out some of their, their materials as to what the different aspects of their product do. Um, Kind of the key overall features that I'm seeing in K2 is a, an emphasis on reusability, uh, things that you can kind of design one time and use anywhere. I'm 
for data sources, the things we think of as data connections and info path, um, K2 has smart objects. And, and you can create what's called a view off of a smart object and then use the view in multiple forms. This is something we'll be looking at. So if it sounds a little, you know, doesn't quite make sense at this overview point, then we're, we're going to dive into it a little bit here in the demo. Um, you, you can change your view and all of the forms that use the view will, will update. They'll use the latest because the, the view is a, it's not copied into the form, it's, it's referenced from the form. Um, and there's a uniformity here. Uh, smart objects, um, they, they abstract out some of the complexity of the data and they, they give you a nice um, kind of a uniformity in the return data. You know, whoever's using the smart object doesn't have to uh, have a deep understanding of what's behind it. If you are in a siloed organization or an organization with some pretty strict rules or roles, um, this sort of thing can be extremely helpful, right? Because then you can say, oh, hello, backend server guys, can you create me some views that will give me this information? And the backend server guys don't have to let you touch the database, and it makes them feel really good. So we, we like that. Um, so there's this abstraction, which is nice. Um, all of the different designers, the different tools I've used thus far, have been very much you know drag and drop, UI centric, click this, click that, and and we're sort of used to that kind of heavy clickiness from InfoPath. So that won't feel unfamiliar at all. Um, you know, you've got a WYSIWYG design tool. Um, I don't know if anybody's looked at. I, I forget whether it's light switch or light speed, so forgive my ignorance in, in Visual Studio, but the one thing that tool kind of, uh, the last time I looked at it sort of lacked, I think it's light switch, um, was, was that drag and drop thing that we get going on and that WYSIWYG thing we get going on in InfoPath where you look at your form and design mode and you have a pretty good sense of what it's going to look like in Preview Filler or Browser. Um, you know, obviously conditional formatting or something could impact that, but it's not like you're working blind. And, and this WYSIWYG form design gives you that same, that same sense. There's a lot of room in K2 for developer extensibility. So if you are a developer or if you work on a team with developers, um, you, you can build a lot of your own stuff here. There's a lot of hooks here that you can hook into. Um, so you can take, and, and this is a huge platform. There is a lot of stuff here, but you can, if for some reason the stuff here isn't meeting your needs, and I'm, I'm like, how could that possibly be? Because there's so many layers of stuff here. Um, you, you can extend it, and, and so that's also, um, it's reassuring, right? It gives you the sense that, well, if for some reason we start using ma and pa's back-end database for something, we can probably build something that reads this. Right, so that's always good. And there's also, they've got a market. Um, it, it's got stuff that uh, other people have developed and want to release to the community. So there's a strong community there, um, which, as we all know, if, if we've been to InfoPath Dev, that, that strong community can shorten your development time. It can help you with questions that a help text is just not going to get you through, right? That personal touch that we all need. So we're form developers, probably, so let's talk about the forms. Um, the main features, the key stuff that I look at and, and kind of have made me go, ooh, are things like um, some auto-generation, which can be nice. You know, we don't always need a perfect form, or we don't always need something that is special or standout-ish. Sometimes we just need something HR can fill out when they get a new employee, right? It, it doesn't... And maybe we slap our logo on it. Um, for those types of forms, auto-generation is a huge time saver. You, you, you hit a, a generate button and you're up and running very quickly. You can submit to multiple data sources from a single form. So any one of us who has ever built a database-bound form and then said, man, I really wish I could also put some of this information over someplace else, will we'll find this um, compelling. Uh, you can use the same form in different steps of a workflow. So if you are using a workflow product, the K2 workflow product, you don't have to design a new form for each step of it. You don't have, you, you, there's, there's this thing called form state, and you could just have a different form state when you use it at different stages in a workflow. Very, uh, 
very nice for reusability. Uh, as I mentioned, you create views that you can reuse in a number of forms. You change that view, and it changes in all your forms. And I mean like magic. You go and you open up that form again, and boom, that view is changed. Now, mind you, um, that's a good and a bad thing, right? Because if you have a form that uses this particular view and you don't want that one to change, but you want all the other ones to change, then you may need to, to create another view. Okay, uh, versioning for forms, for smart objects, for I believe for views too. There is a rule framework here that is extremely complete. Uh, you and I were used to what the six or seven actions <laughs> we get in InfoPath, and uh, there's a lot more complexity here around rules. But with that complexity comes a great deal of power, and uh, power is always cool, right? Uh, there's aggregation and validation. Um, there's subforms, so you can add a button, and that button can pop up another form that has data from a different data source. You can say where you want that data to come from. Uh, you can say what the link is, so you're getting back just this data. I'll show you a little bit of that in our demo. There's built-in search and filtering features. Um, there's like a little lookup control you can use that goes and looks up stuff from, you know, wherever, any place you have data. <laughs> it's neat. Um, there's built-in tabbing, so, so you can add tabs. Those tabs could have different views from different data sources in them. So let's just say you have a customer object and you want to deal with orders on one tab and there's Salesforce data on another tab. You could do that. Um, integrate with workflow. They use CSS for appearance. There's like some built-in themes you can use. Uh, you can create your own themes. So once again, for those of you on a larger team, especially because you know not all of us have every single skill to, to go get the data and to do the CSS and to do the form and view design. But for those of you on a larger team or for those of you who have kind of this multifaceted skill set, it's awesome because you've got this deep level of control should you want it. Of course, you might also just say the out-of-the-box themes are fine. And it's modern. You know, this, this is a modern-based system. It's, you know, HTML5 support and so on. There's just, there's just a ton here. There's a ton of depth here. Now, right now, you know, a lot of us are interested in, in planning for migration, right? Because we, we want to know what our options are and what our possible paths forward are. Um, and so, you know, for, for K2, Right now, what I've seen in the product, there's there's service brokers and you can create smart objects for uh, SharePoint lists easily or for SQL easily. Um, so for right now, what I would see as a path would be get your info path data into SQL or into SharePoint. And you know we've done a webinar after webinar on, on using the info path to SharePoint list tool to, to get that data out into lists. You could do that and then base a smart form off of uh, smart objects from that list right, or lists, and the lists are pretty easy to connect here. Uh, you, can, you can connect smart objects very easily, just make an association between them. And, and QDAP has DBXL, which can help you get your XML files into a SQL database, and you can easily create smart objects off of that as well. So you, you, you figure out where you're going to put that data, get it out of the XML where you're going to put it, um, design some views off of those smart objects. Um, again, these are these are not like a view and info path. Um, you you can take these K two views and put multiples in a single smart form. The smart form is really a a container for views. Although in a smart form you can override your your view logic if you want to, not vice versa. That's that's sort of almost like template parts if you think about it a little bit. You know we can put a template part on a form and override that template parts li uh, logic from the form. Um, we, we can do that here in smart forms and forms in K2. Um, and you can use form level rules that can move data between views as well. So, so you would design your views next, and then you would actually design the form piece, the container for the views. So some of your logic might go in the views, the stuff that you foresee being reusable from one form to an X. Some of your logic might go in the form, the, the stuff that would be very specific to that form. Um, so there's, there's no... Uh, there's no magic thing here where you say, here's my excess in, let's, you know, bam, make a K2 form out of it. But the one thing I have learned over time with InfoPath that I want to remind you of when you're thinking in terms of migration is the first time you figure out how the form should work, that was the hard time. Okay, so when you first designed your form and you figured out, oh, it needs to do X and then Y and then Z, 
it's not the same level of effort now to take that same form logic and put it into something else. I mean, I think probably all of us have had that terrible Monday when we broke our form and we had to start from scratch. And we all realized pretty quickly that while starting from scratch is not our favorite thing, um, it's not as hard the second time because you know how the form works. Or, you know, you pick up a form that somebody else designed and you have to work through the logic. It's, it's very similar stuff. So, so this is not um, end times. This is, this is like, well, we just, we just work through these things. Okay? So I'm going to get started here on my demo. Um, now, by necessity, this is a really high-level look at the K2 Forms product. It has to be. There's just you know, too much here to, to get through it in a limited time amount, which I'm already going over on. Uh, and I apologize for that again. I always go over. You guys knew I was going to. And, and so I'm kind of trying to approach it from the, the, the state of an IP form developer. Um, you guys need to be patient. This stuff's pretty new to me. You know, with InfoPath and SharePoint, I feel like I can answer any question you throw at me. You know, with K2, not so much. I'm just learning it. You know, I, you've had those, those dreams before you give a big presentation at school where you've remembered everything but your pants, you know, and that's kind of how I feel about some of this new stuff where I'm just like, oh, I don't feel as secure as I usually do. But, you know, that's okay. We're all going to feel a little insecure for a while. So I'm going to pop up here um, my screen, and I just want to make sure that I am sharing what I think I am. So hopefully you guys can see the, um, the K2 VM that I've got up here. Um, so the first thing we think about here is our data sources. And, and I've created what's called a composite smart object. Um, I'm just going to, I had to find the right control here so I can verify what you guys are seeing. There we go. I'm a little, I get a little strange with GoToMeeting. I'm not as familiar with it. So what I did in advance was I created what's called a composite smart object. And, and in K2, we can create a smart object that kind of munges data together. And then we can reuse that smart object in a number of places. So it allows you to kind of build these logical models. So what I'm showing you right here is um, SQL Server Management Studio. And I've got this table called Human Resources Employee. Um, and this is all fake data, of course, <laughs> not real social security numbers. <laughs> I'd just like to make that clear. And you can see that we've got some data in here. We've got uh, an employee ID, birth date, hire date, login name. You can also see that we do not have um, email. Uh, manager ID um, or manager login name, the actual uh, name of the department, and so on. But I've created a smart object in K2, and this is a little smart object tester um, application that they have that you can use to, to see what data your smart object returns. And in here, I have combined with my uh, employee table. I see I've got employee ID, birthday, hire date, login name. I've combined that with Active Directory information. So I've also now got email, manager, display name, and department. So I've combined these two entities to create a single logical entity. And if I were your server dude, I would have gone and created this for you, the forum designer, so you could reuse it. And that gives me, server dude now, all of this great control over data how data goes together, um, and how I want uh, data returned to you, the form designer. Um, obviously, it's not magic. When I set it up, I had to say specifically, hey, these two things join on this field. But it's, uh, it's pretty close to magic, actually. It's, it's pretty, you know, click here, click there. You don't need much more knowledge than you needed in InfoPath when you were saying, OK, here's my stuff from my company list, and now go get me my stuff from my contacts list. Very, very similar. So I've got two methods that I created for that smart object. One will read for a single employee, and one will return a list. And I'm going to pop open the K2 designer here and just show you how to uh, create a form. And we're going to be really lazy, and we're just going to do some auto-generation here. So here's my smart object, and I'm going to right-click it and select Generate, generate Views. And when I select Generate Views, I can select what kind, and I'm going to generate a view for just an item. And I'm going to call this demo, since I've already done it once. And I'm going to say, yeah, let's also generate a form. You know, usually you'd want to put stuff in you know, special organized places, but I am uh, not doing that because it's just a demo. 
And so when I click the OK button, I've said I want to save and edit the form. This is going to generate the view for me, and it's going to generate the form. So uh, forms are containers for views. I'm just going to click OK. And this is going to, after it generates it, it's going to pop up the form for me in an edit mode. So give it a second here. There we go. And so here is the view right here. The only thing I can really change here is I can change the view title. And I can change whether or not it's expanded or collapsed when I first look at the form. Okay, and, and you can also change that in the view level. Um, but you can see I can't actually modify any of these controls. You can't, uh, I guess, tell that I'm clicking on it, but I'm clicking on it. can't modify those controls. However, I can set values of these controls uh, from controls in the form. So if I were to just add, and I'm just going to drag and drop, you know, a text box over here. If I just add a text box here, I can now add a rule and have this text box change something here in this view that I can't change just by modifying the view here within the form. I'm going to click on the rules because I want you guys to kind of see um, a little bit about this, this rules engine and how it works. So this right here, these are the current rules that exist for me. Um, and I didn't create these. These were created for me when I, when I generated things. And you can see uh, we've got location. And I can tell right off whether it's a view rule or whether it's a form rule. That helps me kind of keep track of what's what. I'm going to just add a rule. And the rule I'm going to add is when a control on the form raises an event. I just added that text box. I can also add uh, rule overrides here. So I could add, uh, you know, when a control on the view raises an event, I could change what happens when a button is clicked or add something to when a button is clicked. But I'm going to go ahead and just, this is my control on the form. This is why we would not want to leave that name to text box, right? That would be a that would be a bad name. That's like field one in InfoPath, but again, demo. So when it's changed, not when it's initialized, I can add conditions here if I want to. You can see these little breadcrumbs are pretty much a commonality through here. You could kind of pop back and forth using those. Um, there's quite a few different uh, simple comparisons, and then there's also additional types of comparisons like form passes validation. You can configure validation and say what, what is or is not valid there. We don't need any conditions. The action I'm going to add is I'm going to um, set a field's value, or I'm going to set the value of a label. And I'm just going to use the search box here to find what I need. And that is one of the things I found, um, you know, the difference again between InfoPath and this. A lot more different choices for rule actions here. A lot more potential for uh, complexity, which as we all know is sometimes a very good thing. Sometimes you need it. Um, but the search feature in these rule wizards has made it helpful for me to, to find what I need. So I'm going to set a control in the view. And so here's my view. If I had multiple views in this form, I would be able to select which one I wanted. But, you know, come on, I've only got one view. It knows what I'm doing. So I'm going to go ahead and set the properties of, I'm going to set the, um, I'm going to set the employee ID label. And then I can configure what I'm going to set it to. So you can see this is very UI-centric. Um, I'm going to just type a value here. This is for the text of the label. But you can see there are other things I could change here. Um, so I could change whether it was visible, enabled. Uh, I could change whether or not I wanted to wrap the text. Hey, you never know, right, what somebody might want to change. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and say OK, and I'm going to say Finish. So I've just gone ahead and from my form, I'm going to say Finish, and we're going to run this. From my form, I've changed something in my view. And, and we've got all these great, I mean, I could use the, the runtime URL here, or I can just run it from here in the designer. I found the designer pretty intuitive. I mean, obviously, when anything's new, there's a little bit of a, a struggle. I happen to know an employee ID of two. Um, this view, by default, was set to read employee details on a button. Well, we'll change that here in a second. I'll show you something else. But now I've pulled back details for this employee. So what we care about is changing this label. And so I'm going to type something type some nonsense. And you can see our label changed when I typed my nonsense there. And that's, you know, that I kind of just wanted to show you that ability to override. Um, 
so what I want to do next, and you guys will bear with me, I know I'm running over, but I'll, I'll wrap up soon. I just wanted to show you a few more things. Um, is this view, it's, uh, it's not that great, right? Because why should I have to know an employee number? And, and I'm not so uh, happy about having to click a button to um, check out those details. So this is something I can change in the view itself, because obviously it's, it's silly enough that we'd want to we'd wanna change it all over. Um, just like an info path, you know, you can right click a control and you can change it. There's a methodology here for changing controls. There's just a little a little button here. And so I'm going to change my control to a drop down list and say OK. And over here in the properties, uh, you can see we've got a data source. And I'm just going to select a data source for this. And I'm going to use this same uh, smart object. I could use other smart objects that are available to me here, but I'm going to go ahead and continue using this one, and I'm going to use its list method. So it grabbed the list method. And for display, instead of login name, um, I'm just going to show the display name. I drag and drop that over. So yeah, put on your wrist brace, fellow RSI sufferers. <laughs> and we'll just say OK here. And so now that's a drop down. And it should give me a list of employees to choose from. I'm going to click over to rules. Now, when this was auto-generated for me, it generated this rule for uh, read employee details button is clicked. And if I needed to see what I needed to do, um, I could use this rule. I could say, oh, OK, so this is what I need to do, and this is how we configure it. Great. And I'm going to cancel out of this instead, and I'm going to, yeah, I want to cancel. K2 is careful, man. They're not going to let you lose work. You do a lot of dismissing of dialogues. I'm going to add a rule here. And the rule I'm going to add is when a control on the view raises an event, and the control I care about now is that employee ID drop-down list. And when it is changed, right, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to execute a method on the view. And um, the method is read employee details. Okay, I've got to configure that because it needs an employee ID. And that comes from you guys like all the kind of, uh, um, uh, <laughs> that comes from the employee ID drop-down list. So here we go. It's, it's pretty um, intuitive, but, but I, like, like you can see, I still have these moments of, hmm, I hope I've got that right. But, you know, it, I, I was like that with InfoPath initially too, right? So I'm going to finish this, and I'm going to test it here as a view. So we can test our view as an individual item, which is what I'm going to do here. Just going to run it. Um, and I can say, yeah, I want this employee. Isn't that nice? Right? And then it reads all the employee details for me. Now, what's interesting is, of course, now my form. Let me find the right form. Now my form, without making any changes to it, reflects this same, this same change, right? And so I've got this same change now in my form. Um, and so we could remove that button if we wanted to, you know. I, now, the form itself, I mentioned styles. I'd like to show you styles real quickly. So let's pop over into edit mode here. There's a lot of ways to get to the same thing. I think we kind of see that in InfoPath and the ribbon, too. Um, so if we want to change the style, on our on our form, it is here theme. Sorry, it's under themes, and and so I can select a different theme right here and say, oh, I want you know this. Oh, no, I don't really want that. But you see what I'm saying? It's pretty straightforward to change a theme. Changes the theme of the entire form. So if I have 17 views in here, I just click one button, and now everything looks the same and looks right. Okay. So that is, uh, that's some pretty straightforward stuff. Um, I want to show you another form. That was, my, that was our kind of a quick and dirty, look how far we can get in two minutes kind of a thing. So again, there's, there's situations where that makes sense. I want to show you another form that I've been working on in a training module I've been doing. And that one is a little more complex. I think he lives here. Let me try again. I think I'm rushing things. Um, Oh, I see what I've got going on. I've still got that in design mode. Let me just cancel out of there. 
Okay, and so let's see what we can find here. I've got my form, and here's my sales order form, and I'm just going to pop that in edit mode so you can see it, and then we'll run it real quick so I can show you a couple of other little things. Okay, so this form is using two different views in this, in this tab. It's got the order header and the order detail. These are two different views. They're related. You can probably figure that out as your typical sales order thing. Um, and then it's got a button down here that's at the form level, and that button uh, submits information from both the header and the detail. And then we've got a sales order history tab, and this tab, when it's initialized, will query back all of the sales orders for that customer from a different table. Um, you can add tabs just as easily as click to add a tab, very straightforward stuff. So if I wanted to add a tab and for whatever reason put my employee details stuff on there, I can certainly do that. I want to run this form real quick so that you guys can see, see a, few, yeah, a few of the other things I mentioned when we were talking. And let me just run, there we go. Okay, so uh, I've got a cascading drop down here. You select a region, and then the customers are going to be dependent on the region you select. Um, if I select Americas and diff different customer, right, you can see those options change. So uh, cascading drop downs, pretty straightforward to set up. Um, for anybody who's kind of struggled with XPath filters, you'll appreciate that this is a lot more of a point and shoot kind of a thing. You click and say, oh, relate on this. And, and so it's a little less complicated, I think, if, if you've had troubles with XPath. Um, I've got a more info button here that pops open a subform. This subform, one of the controls we've got in K2 forms is a rating control, so I think that's pretty cool. So this subform brings back information from this particular customer of Holloway and Sun, and I can just dismiss it. I think that's an awesome feature. Um, I've got some conditional formatting here on my salesperson field. Uh, it's just got a red border if um, it's blank. And this is a, a lookup field. So this is looking to one of my um, employee tables. And if I just type in like uh, the start of a name, I happen to know there's only one option for this guy. And tab, you can see it resolves just like a people picker does. But it's it's not a people picker. The lookup could have been for products, or the lookup could have been for categories, or the lookup could have been for anything, right? And you can auto-resolve, you can do a search here, there's a, a nice little search box. Um, you know, if I type in just BRO, I've got, I've got two options here and I can select and say OK. So you've got all of those kinds of options. Um, I can look at a sales order history here. Um, I didn't do a very good job of filling out this order, but you can see at the end there's a total due. Right, so so we've got that little piece, and and all of this stuff up here, like the filters and the quick search, that's all just built in, uh, which is super nice. You don't have to do, you don't have to do a lot of work on that. One last thing I'd like to show you in edit mode that um, I found really compelling, and that was the way. You, you've got control over how the rules execute. So I just want to take a look at the rules here on the Create New Order button. And we go take a look at our rules, and we are looking for Create New Order. Ah, Create Sales Order. There it is. I probably should have used Search. And I'm going to edit that rule. So this is what I want to show you. If the form passes validation, and I can configure that and say these, these are required or what have you, um, then also complete the following. And I've marked this as in a batch. You can decide how you want to run your rules. You know how sometimes in InvoPath we want rules to run right, one right after another because there's a logical dependency there. But, you know, sometimes there's not a logical dependency, and we can run things concurrently or in a batch. And so concurrently, we can run them all together. Or in this case, I'm running these in a batch because these are uh, kind of a master detail set of rules. And we want to be able, we, we want to run the one and then the next as a batch process. So I wanted to show you that because I think that's kind of cool. Um, 
And that's really, you know, I know it's 8.40 and I've gone over, and, and so that's really, I guess, about, about it for the demo. We'll go ahead and call a halt there. As you can see, there's a ton of, of stuff here. It's, it's, there's, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of pieces to this particular puzzle. Um, I've barely touched on what all's there. You know, I, I, I've always thought of InfoPath as being kind of an iceberg because it's got more to it than what you can see. Um, and I've been really astounded by the, the richness of the feature set in K2. Um, you know, the one thing about InfoPath, I guess, that's been really beautiful for most of us is it just kind of showed up on our desktops. You know, IT updated Office for us, and now we've got this product. And that's not going to be the case with K2. It's not just going to show up on your on your desktop. But especially if you're a larger enterprise, um, if you are chasing data around multiple systems, for example, let's say your product marketing team has stuff in SharePoint on on stuff and you've got sales stuff in Salesforce and the accounting team is using who knows what and you need to find a way to create forms that can really centralize this data and really create you know these logical business objects out of your data then I would highly recommend you look into K2 you know check out some of their their marketing stuff and, and take a look at the at a, a richer demo, take a look at some of their videos. Um, it, I just would really encourage you to, to check this product out. Um, if anybody has any questions, uh, feel free to add them. I think we might have one here. Um, yeah, where can I download a trial and what are their system rec and prices? Okay, I would I would direct you to the K2 website. Um, I think it's just k2.com, and you should be able to find, yeah, it is, it's k2.com. You should be able to find some resources there to help you get in touch with somebody with K2. There's uh, tech specs there that can help you determine system requirements and so forth. Um, does the form product ship separately from the rest of the platform? I ask because we already have other workflow tools. I think that Forms is part of Black Pearl, and again, you guys are hitting me on these places where I don't have a ton of knowledge. Um, I would recommend, again, hitting the K2 website and, and looking into it. I think Forms is part of Black Pearl, um, I, you, you've got, because you've got to have the smart objects in order to use, the, you know, to really leverage them, so, so I, would, I would think it was part of that. Um, can K2 Forms be printed? Yeah, and there's even a an actual built-in export to PDF action, so you can throw an export to PDF button on your form, which is pretty cool. Um, is there a way to copy duplicate a view without remaking? So, is somebody asked about uh, copying or duplicating a view without remaking from scratch? And uh, let me just cancel out here, and I, let me hit cancel a kajillion times. But we do that in InfoPath too. We hit cancel a lot. And so, if we, I thought there was a way to just copy a view, but let me get out of this window and. Yes, I'm pretty sure you can make a copy of a view. Um, <laughs> I thought I saw this. Sorry, we're gonna we're gonna poke here for just a second. Mm, yeah, save as create a copy of this view. So there's a save as option. So yeah, you can create a copy and move on. Um, oh great, somebody else has popped up to say that Forms is part of Black Pearl, so I appreciate that. Um, and as to the question about license prices, again, I'm going to have to refer you to the, the K2 site. That's not something I've got a sheet on, so I do not know. I probably should have grabbed that information prior to the webinar, but you know, again, New stuff is my only excuse, right? I just, I just don't, I just don't have the depth of information on this. Um, what has been a learning curve in my experience? Oh my gosh, that is an excellent question. So, I would like to remind all of you that the learning curve with InfoPath was actually probably steeper than you remember. And I just, if if any of my initial forms that I created when I was first learning InfoPath are still in the wild and somebody's having to maintain them, I want to make a public apology for them right now. Because I think my learning curve with InfoPath has still continued over these past however many years I've been working with it. Um, because like I've mentioned, there's a depth of product there. You know. I've been working pretty hard going through uh, the core training and going through the smart forms training and I feel like I'm just starting to get kind of a grip on how things work together. I think there's definitely um, there's definitely going to need to be some time devoted to 
training to get your arms around this thing. But like I pointed out, I don't think you have to get, I don't think you have to get yourself completely wrapped around the entire product to be able to get started. Um, and I think you're less likely to build really bad things than we were with InfoPath, because with InfoPath we could create these horrible data sources, whereas here at least you've got to create a smart object. So, I mean, it says smart in the name, right? You know, there's a lot of stuff in there that's going to help you give things good names and so forth. You, you have to try a little harder to come up with bad data, I think, in K2. Um, and, and so the learning curve is there. It's real. Um, some training material is going to be needed. Uh, I, I think because of the potential complexity, because there's so many features, it's so feature rich, I think because of the potential complexity it's a little um, more challenging than InfoPath in some ways, but I think there's more of a safety net there. I see more protections to kind of keep us from making really bad design decisions there, so I, I think over the long term it, it kind of balances out a little bit. Um, somebody mentions not seeing prices on the website, and yeah, I don't, I don't know that that you're going to find them there. It might just be a, a contact us thing where you, where you need to go ahead and, and find the contact us button on K2 and just say, hey, can I get a pricing sheet? Um, and another user, another another attendee comments that they suspect it's licensed like other products based on servers or SharePoint front ends. Uh, what ways can you have users access the forms? Um, you know, there's a URL. Uh, you can click on to access them. Um, I saw in a more recent demo that they've got um, also a version that integrates with uh, SharePoint lists, so you can build K2 forms on top of SharePoint lists pretty quickly and magically. Uh, that was kind of a that was kind of a neat thing in 2013 that demo, so that your users could use it from your users can use these from SharePoint. You can you can deploy them so that your users can use them from SharePoint. Um, Otherwise, there's a URL you can provide, you know, just like you surface the link to an InfoPath form in different places. You know, you surface that link to your users, and they're able to use it. Uh, no need for client software. No, uh, uh you know, it's web-based stuff. And so, when you do things like um, when you resize the form, you size it down smaller, things kind of flow down a little smaller, um, and that sort of uh, that sort of thing. Not like with some InfoPath forms where your user on their phone is having to scroll right, scroll right. You know, it it, it resizes pretty nicely. Um, so yeah, to the best of my understanding, there's no need for client software. It's just all it's all web based. And I'm sorry, I'm doing such a ridiculously poor job of answering some of these questions, but you know, like I said, it's new. <laughs> um, how well does it support mobile devices? So I have not tried it on a mobile device. I have read that they support um, OS, OS systems, iOS systems like iPhone, iPad, and Android. Um, but no, this VM that I'm working on is pretty sandboxed. It's a training VM, and, and I've not had a, a method to, to try things on mobile. However, reading the materials about K2 indicates that they've got good mobile support. Um, definitely something to check out. Oh, great. And another, another attendee points out that in their demo with them, it looked like it supports uh, mobile devices very well. So, so uh, we've got an attendee who's seen a demo that, that shows, uh, you know, really, that shows robust mobile support. And that's kind of what I'd expect, you know, because they, they do kind of have this um, reusability, uniformity, this emphasis that would make me suspect that they would provide good mobile support. All right. Does anybody else have anything they want to ask? I'm going to flip over to this uh, this slide of some links. Um, you can pop up with another question if you have it, or another comment if you have it, because we love to hear those. So, I would encourage you for fun to go to this easy versus hard k2.com link and watch this. It is an excellent piece of marketing material. It's a comparison of somebody building an expense system with K2 forms and smart objects and workflow versus somebody using ASP.NET. And, and it's, um, it's fun. It's a really fun video. So I encourage you to watch it. Um, there was a podcast uh, that somebody from a company called Concurrency did that compares smart forms with InfoPath. And there's also, if you're like me and more of a reader than a listener, um, there's a transcript. So you can read through the transcript there as well, and there's also some, some additional stuff there. 
forms on data. This is another marketing material, uh, another marketing site for K2. But it's just it's it's a really nice looking site. I'm sorry, guys. I'm kind of a I'm kind of a nice looking stuff fan girl. I can't build it before I like looking at it. And this is a really neat kind of a neat kind of a site that they've got set up to kind of give you a sense of data flow and so forth. So I would I would check that out as well. I mean, you know, the smart form site itself, and and you know, they've got a ton of PDF material there. Um, one of our attendees mentioned not being able to find prices easily. Look, this is complex software. I I don't have when I when I use it, I don't have any impression that it's inexpensive. So, um, but but I would guess that licensing is going to depend on servers and so forth. And um, there's a robust community, and there's obviously been a huge development cost. I mean, there's been a, the, the development investment in this stuff. It's there's a lot going on there. So so I I definitely uh, think that for whatever dollar you end up spending, it's going to be worth it. However, it may be more of a tool for the larger organization simply because of, of, of cost. Um, it's just, you know, one of those things. The, the more powerful the thing, the more development time that went into it, eh, sometimes the higher the cost. So I'm not seeing any additional questions. I so appreciate everybody coming today and bearing with me and, and um, you know, being willing to just kind of hang out with Qdabra as we try some of these different things and get a sense of them. Um, and I hope that this at least gave you a sense of, of the designer and, and, and how things work. And honestly, I haven't been working with it very long. And, and you know, I'm not completely lost, so there must be <laughs> there must be some learnability there, right? If I can pick it up, I know you guys can. It's not that big of, you know, it's, it's not... It's not brain surgery, right? It's it's software, and and so I, I think uh, we all have a chance. And and some of the auto generation stuff is is um, I think really you know compelling in terms of not every form has to be the Mona Lisa. Some forms uh, just need to be able to gather a little data and, and help you go on about your business. You do come check out uh, Forms Quo. You know we, we're we're putting together stuff there to kind of help keep this momentum going and, and um, investigate options and help provide you with resources as you investigate options and keep this kind of this community working together as we explore ways around this info path puzzle and uh, I hope everybody enjoyed learning about K2 this morning a little bit at least and um, Please drop in on our other webinars. Uh, we'll get the video up on, on YouTube. I don't really have any materials to share from this, so there probably won't be any uh, packaged up anything, but we will have the video available and, and slides. Have a great day. Thanks for coming, and we will talk to you all again soon.